Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Mandeep and in today's video we are going to learn about Principal Component Analysis PCA. Uh, so first thing first we are going to have an introduction about this algorithm, how it works then we will take an example. So in uh, let's get started with it. So Principal Component Analysis is very first. Um, it, in this algorithm we calculate principal components. and this is an unsupervised algorithm and the third one is uh, this is used for dimensionality reduction when i say dimensionality reduction assume that um, in real world we have uh, huge data sets so assume that we have a data set of let's say uh, thousand attribute each data in that particular uh, data set assume that have thousand attributes and um, let's say there are total 10 lakh records So let's say there are total 10 lakh records. So you can think of that if we, when we will be doing a computation of this much of uh, heavy big data set. So it will be like 10 lakh record into uh, this uh, uh, 10 lakh records into uh, this 1000. So it will be a very big uh, highly computation intensive thing. So or rather what we can do we can bring the uh, this number of attributes uh, to a lower value so uh, basically what we can do is uh, instead of 1000 assume that for example we bring the number of record a uh, number of attributes attributes uh, to uh, let's say as 10 so then it will be uh, 10 into 10 lakh so our our size has grown uh, has decreased drastically so basically this algorithm is used in those cases where we have a many number of thousands of features and many number of records so basically if when we required to decrease the number of features based on uh, let's say their relevance or their importance with respect to the target variable uh, we can use this algorithm and we can bring down the number of uh, uh, we can bring down the number of attributes and we pick the most relevant most important uh, attributes with respect to our target variable so this is basically uh, uh, this is a kind of introduction about uh, principal component analysis so let me take an example uh, for this algorithm so assume that we are given with a image data set digit image data set so let's say those digits are of handwritten uh, handwritten digits so let's say i have digits from 1 to 9 and 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 we are given with a data set uh, where we have uh, images of handwritten handwritten digits and we want to build a model uh, which can predict based on the given image that what number is so for example this is an image of a uh, handwritten digit 2 this is an image of handwritten uh, digit 3 and uh, I want to build a model and I will give that image to my model and that model will tell me uh, that this this image is uh, number 3 so uh, number number 3 so uh, assume that we are given with this data set and uh, so what we are going to do is that how principal component uh, analysis algorithm could help in in such type of problem uh, so assume that this is let's say i am given with this digit 3 and this digit this is an image of a digit 3 handwritten digit 
and any image in uh, computer science is represented in form of rgb and any for any any image any image is made of, of uh, from these three components rgb red green or blue and their value ranges from 0 to 255 and uh, assume that this 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 particular image of digit 3 is uh, is uh, let's say um, is of 8 by 8 pixel so assume that i have written a uh, handwritten image 3 and this is so how my computer will uh, understand this is like it is for example purpose i am taking it as an 8 by 8 image So these are my eight columns and the same way let's say my eight rows one two three four five six and seven so assume that uh, so and each each cell in this matrix will be containing some value assume that there is no uh, so assume that there is no part of this handwritten digit image uh, is coming into this and there is a white background so this value will be 255 and this will be also 255 255 so all those values will be 255 the same way uh, all those values will be uh, here will be uh, 255 as well I am writing outside for let's say for this column so basically th these rows are uh, 255 255 and so on and here uh, is the some portion of this three uh, so let's say here some some value will be some random value let's say 10 15 uh, 7 9 and uh, sorry 8 uh, so let's say and here it is again 255 and the same way this this uh, the whole this is uh, completed this is whole uh, matrix is filled with the respective values where uh, there is a white background and there is no value uh, it is 255 and assume that where there is some part of the image is coming into this uh, into this 2d grid cell so respective cell respective color combination value will be uh, written here so this is 8 by 8 matrix so you can think of there are 64 values to represent one image so there are 64 attribute attributes or you can think of 64 pixels um, 64 pixel to represent this so and the same way uh, if i write this let's say uh, i write uh, the another number um, and one more thing you would observe here is that the cell which are kind of on the corners and they are not uh, having any change so those are let's say these are these cells because these cell are uh, containing only static value uh, static value as in the white background whatever the background is because the uh, this image is not uh, the part of this image is not coming into those cells so they are just keeping the values as a static and there is no more change and no more variance in in these values the same way if you take any number from 1 to 9 1 to 9 uh, the values of pixels which are around the uh, corners or around the borders uh, that is going to be static you write let's say uh, i if i take another example let's say if i write 2 let's say this is my 2 so the values the values of uh, the pixels which are on this side and the value of the pixel are which are on this side those are no variance there is no variance or there is no change so these pixels are having the same values this pixel this pixel this pixel so basically uh, uh, 
that means these these pixels are not having that much relevant information with respect to this digit or any digit so what we can do instead of taking these 64 attributes we can we can drop down these attributes uh, to a certain number let's say if i drop uh, uh, i drop let's say uh, two column and two rows. Uh, I mean two columns from this side. So a to the 16 and a to the 16 32 uh, if I drop 32 pixel values because uh, I can drop this 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 and the same way 16 this so i can drop 32 uh, attributes out of these because these 32 attributes are not uh, having any relevant information with respect to my target variable and my target variable is i want to predict the image of a digit uh, i want to predict the digit based on the its handwritten image so the same way you write any number you will be uh, able to observe that the pixel value on the corner side are not changing much or they are not having that much variance so uh, they are not uh, we can drop those so instead of taking 64 pixels we can take 32 uh, pixels so uh, this way uh, we can uh, we can uh, squeeze the size of the computation and it will help us a lot during the training so uh, in so this is this is the actual idea behind the principal component analysis and let me give you a brief introduction about the principal components so assume that um, this is a two dimensional data given so there is this is one attribute x and this is another attribute y and our data points are lying something like this way so assume that my data points are lying somehow this way and you you would be able to uh, observe that the highest variance among these data points is around this axis so you can see that values of data points are ranging from this point to this point and uh, so this is the lengthwise so and so this will become my uh, since it has a uh, uh, lots of variance uh, so highest variance so this will become my pc1 principal component one so this has my highest variance variance means uh, uh, values are varying from here to here during the uh, along this axis so from here to here example for example purpose and uh, the another uh, and the another uh, thing which I uh, which we can think is on the breadth wise so breadth wise you can think of that values are ranging from here to here so the another the next most relevant so the main the next most relevant uh, principal component will be my this one along this this axis because now i am taking uh, breadth y since we are working uh, we are uh, we can draw only two dimensional on any any whiteboard so that's why i am taking only two dimensional uh, two dimensional example so the idea here is that uh, the principal components are the component are the vectors uh, which has a variance uh, based on the highest to lowest degree so the pc1 the principal component will be the uh, component or the vector which has highest variance the pc2 will be the uh, component or the vector which have the second highest variance so in this case um, my data points are varying from this to this because this has highest variance uh, kind of lengthwise and uh, the second vector or the second uh, uh, pc2 the principal component 2 will be uh, on kind of breadth wise so my data points are varying from here to here so the and you can think of that uh, 
always uh, you will find that th this is kind of uh, uh, already established mathematical rule that uh, there will be uh, these two principal components will be uh, orthogonally uh, in any n dimensional space so here you can see that in this two dimensional example we have one this principal component which has highest variance uh, on the kind of lengthwise and thus so this is my principal component one and my second the second highest variance in this data set is breadthwise which is kind of uh, from here to here you can think of these terms and uh, so these all all these will always contain a 90 degree angle among these uh, prints pc1 and pc2 so these are kind of orthogonal vectors too will these will be orthogonal vectors always so this is uh, the idea behind principal component analysis how the principal components are calculated and how they are represented on a kind of let's say 2d graph and based on how um, based on uh, some certain relevance or importance uh, how we can use this principal component analysis algorithm to reduce the dimension or to reduce the problem size without losing the important information so this is all about for today's video uh, thanks for watching please do subscribe my channel for machine learning videos i'm working on machine learning playlist thanks for watching uh, see you then